Welcome back, Brick Maniacs. We are here at the GHQ. Right. And we're going over the uh, new models that are up on the uh, this quarter's, this time of year's Brick Mania eBay auction. Right. Kind of whenever we have time. This is, it's, this it's is the stuff that happens. Auction number four. It's okay. the fourth display model auction we've done in the last year or so. so mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's, it's about quarterly. That's about the schedule we've been going Sweet. On. Well, we have a lot of really cool models to get through. So let's start off here. You had, you said you had them kind of going in, uh, in, in, in a timeline or whatever. Right, right. So I have the World War One stuff out first. Okay, um, cool. It was just easier to get them all lined up for, for me to, like, visualize them. So um, we'll start out with sort of, and they actually kind of go small almost the largest at the same time. So Perfect. We do have, at the beginning here, we do have this uh, Maxim machine gun set. It is uh, one of the first World War I sets that we ever did a, quite a while back. And it does have these MMCB capes cloth uniforms on back before we had our own printing capabilities. We were relying on our, our allied businesses to, to make uniforms for our soldiers. And, the only way we can get World War One uniforms is to actually use these cloth jackets. They're, they're really unique, really cool. Brick built Maxim, of course. So now you can get a, 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 a Brick Arms Maxim if you wanted. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is sort of a piece of Brick Mania history right there, since it's it's old. We innovated. That's what we used to have to do back in the day. So. Very cool. Very old school. Yep. Moving on next to it, we got another piece of artillery, 75 millimeter M1897. Yeah, it is the American version of the French 75. Uh, you do to get two American World War One soldiers. They do have a. a I think, believe those are prototype at Springfield Rifles. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you what the difference between a production Springfield and a prototype, but I know back Fair in enough. the day when we first started making these kits, they, they, they weren't an on-the-shelf item. Okay. So these are, these are uh, uh, you know, like as I said, with all these items, this is a piece of Brickmania history. So mm -hmm. that, that thing's been out of production for at least a year now. Um, so get it, get it, get in the auction. It looks like the one next to it too has a super old school figure to go with it as well. Right, this is the 18, original 18-pounder 18 kit. Uh, managed to find one of the original World War I British Tommies that we had. Cool. Um, it is, a, again, a fabric cover. That SMLE has a bayonet clip to it. That's how old <laughs> it is. There was no SMLEs with bayonets at, the, at this point. Um, you know, so this is, this is again, this is, this is several years old. Mm -hmm. um, piece of, if, you know, if you're a collector of Brick Mania, this is going to be one of your way, only ways of getting one of these older figures, older older sets. And is th has this stuff, this older stuff, just been on display that long and, and, and now because of the shuffle of stores is why it's becoming available? It is, and we, we've we we've had displays, we've had things sitting in boxes waiting for, hey, the next round. Uh, and, you know, there's not, not not always the best communication around here. So when we have a <laughs> store open up, like, hey, let's put something out, we'll, we'll, we'll make a display model, we'll mm -hmm. actually just open up a, a set and make it not realizing we had one sitting around from before, like sitting in a box. <laughs> so it's not like it's been collecting dust, it's actually been well well preserved. We put everything sure. in bags. We, 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 these are, you know, these are used, mm -hmm. they have been built, obviously they're built up, uh, but typically all of our display models at the stores are cleaned meticulously all the time and kept in glass display cases. So you don't get a lot of dust. Every every once in a while we'll, we'll have one in our, in our auction that's been around a little bit longer. Sure. It might be a little worse for the wear, but uh, typically speaking, they're all pretty nice condition. Well, yeah, and you can see by looking at all these that they look like they've been well cared for. So no issue, just pretty cool to see that uh, some of this stuff has, has been around as long as mm -hmm. it has. Uh, keep moving, so we have the uh, QF 13 pounder here as well. A couple of soldiers with that. Yeah, it has a limber, a 13 pounder. This is kind of unique because because it's the only kit that the only World War One artillery piece uh, of the smaller ones that have this limber. Uh, that same limber could be used with the 18 pounder as well. Very very cool. Uh, next to that, the Skoda. Is that how you say that? Yeah, Skoda. Skoda model 1416. This is a Skoda being the uh, plant in the Austria-Hungarian Empire, actually in the Czech Republic now. Um, that made a lot of weapons and uh, used by uh, the Central Powers in, in World War One. And then again when it was annexed by Germany in World War II. They, sure. A lot of these things appeared in, in the German military. So the Skoda, uh, it's an Austro-Hungarian uh, kit and you get two Austro-Hungarian soldiers. In fact, those are the only Austro-Hungarian soldiers oh. we've ever offered as complete soldiers. We have sticker packs, but this is this is a particularly, you know, we have soldiers. Well, oh, very cool. Worth it for that right there. Uh, next to it, this is a really unique looking model, the M1917. Uh, just to tell me a little bit about what we have going on here. Cool looking figures with this one. Right, this is the French 155 millimeter cannon. It comes with two figures. Let's pull them both out. So. So you can people that realize out. that there are two figures. And these are fully detailed French figures, and they're unique because they actually have the artillery badge printed on the helmet, which we've only done, the only way you can get this is with this, with this kit, is these figures. Wow. Um, the gun actually is, is configured right now to travel. It does open up. It's it's basically a long barrel 155 millimeter. Yeah, you can uh, kind of see on the image here what it looks like when it's set up. And it is basically the precursor of the long tom gun that was used by the United, you know, built in the United States and used in World War II by U.S. troops. Um, it does have an opening breech. It has all kinds of really cool features. You can deploy it. Um, 
it has these track links, the wheels that are, that are uh, wrapped with track links, which is very typical. Mm -hmm. They would actually do that in, in the field so the cannons wouldn't sink in the mud when they're sure. being, being transported around. Um, so that's, oop, that's a very unique set for, for Brick Mania. Um, of course, out of production now. And, you know, maybe we'll make the actual long tom. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's descendant. So. Very, very cool. Next to it, yeah, it looks like we have a little German staff car, World War I, continuing with that theme. It is a Knight's Tour. Um, it ha does have two figures. You get a, uh, a, a German officer and then like a German junior officer driving it. So uh, it's, it is unique. Yeah. Uh, yep. We did we did a couple staff cars. We had a British and a German staff car. And these are, uh, this is one of the- It goes right along with it. Have. Very cool. Then we got another car next to it, M1917 Model T Ambulance. So this is a, a American vehicle? Right, it is, it is a Model T Ford. Um, and the Ford didn't actually, they just made the chassis, the, the, the rest of it was modified by the U.S. government. Looks like we're missing a piece. I will find that missing piece off the stretcher <laughs> um, and get that fixed. But you do have a stretcher that comes with it. It does have all kinds of cool little opening fe you know, features like opening, uh, the, the tailgate opens, these little side panels actually open too, so you can, you can tend to your, your wounded man. A lot of cool functions. Women while, while riding in the ambulance. Yep, it does Another come with a driver too, so yeah, unique in that aspect. Another just super unique looking kit. And then this kit, this one's kind of the funky one we were talking about too, because this one is not actually a kit. Right. It is the canvas add-on that came with the instructions in the Great War Volume 2 right. book. Right, we've never released this as a kit. Okay. So if you wanted a Liberty truck, the only way you're gonna get a Liberty truck is to build it yourself or get this one from us, because we never sold this as a kit. Correct. Uh, the only thing we sold, you got the wheels and the canvas and everything else you had to go buy yourself. Mm -hmm. um, let me fix this real quick, just notice that. I'd be picky about these. <laughs> That's my job. Um, but this is unique. The only way you're going to get this is, is from the book. It does have like opening, you know, opening uh, tailgate. Uh, you know, it's it's a truck. <laughs> this is like the precursor of the CCKW. This is sure. the first standardized U.S. Army truck, uh, or truck to be used by all U.S. forces mm -hmm. um, all over the world. So this this is developed during World War One because there was no standardized trucks. They were just buying commercial vehicles as they did with the Model T there. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we want something heavy duty. Our specifications, simple, all the parts are interchangeable. And they came up with this. And like I said, this was the basis of what, what was to come in World War II where they really had to crank up production. Yeah, very cool. A good example too of just kind of some of the unique models you can get in a Brick Mania eBay auction because uh, as he was saying, this has never been available as a kit. So right. if you wanted a complete one and don't have the book, now you can get one complete from, from Brick Mania, but right. only through this auction. <laughs> yeah, we'll photocopy the instructions for the from the book so you have a print out a set, we'll photocopy. Sure. Print out a set of the instructions and uh, for the for the canvas cover as well. Okay, very cool. Uh, next to it, we got a couple of World War One planes here. So let's run through these. So it's the Fokker E3. It's the Eindecker. It's the Eindecker. single okay. single wing, first you know, widely used monoplane. This is what they these things like terrorized the 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 skies of, of France and uh, during World War One until <laughs> the Allies could come up with something that was actually combated. So, interesting. Yeah, this is interesting that it has that shoot through propeller. Mm -hmm. That was the first time that that was ever developed. Uh, be before that. Uh, airplanes could only have guns like way up high out in the wing. Because you'd shred your own prop. Right. <laughs> or the guys would just throw bricks at each other as they flew by. So um, this was this was kind of a game changer when they developed that 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 uh, interrupter gear that allowed them to shoot through the propeller. Very cool. And then next to it we have a uh, French French fighter. Yeah, it's a Newport. Yep. <laughs> and of course to solve their problem with the the same problem with the gun shooting, mm -hmm. the they just put the gun way up high on top of the wing. Uh, both of these planes come with pilots. I should I might add. Yeah. Um, of course. That's typical for a Brick Mania kit. If we're going to have a plane, you usually get the pilot that goes with it. Sitting next to it, we have a World War I Italian torpedo boat. Right, this is the Moss 15. This is a cool display model. Comes with a little stand and everything. So Yeah, and it's the full the full boat. You could display it as a waterline model if you wanted to, to, to do a mock or something. You oh, can pull, very that, cool. pull that whole bottom does come off. Um, you, that being said, um, this boat is... You know, if you wanted to make a really cool diorama, you can make the battleship it sank. <laughs> so that would be about 50 times bigger. But uh, the Moss 15 is famous for, it is the only motor torpedo boat that has actually successfully sank a battleship in action. Wow. So I did not know that. That is a very cool yeah, story. Yeah, it sank a, a, it sank one of the biggest uh, um, battleships fielded by, our, well, uh, afloat uh, made by the Austro-Hungarian army. And um, it, was a, it was a big feat. Uh, this boat is actually preserved in Rome. It still still exists. Huh, that's very so. cool. 
Oh, it's a sweet looking little kit as well. Uh, moving on from there, it looks like we're finally getting into the, the World War One era, or excuse me, World War Two era. Yep. <laughs> leaving leaving World War One. Yeah, right, leaving World War One. Moving on with the uh, Type 1, 47 millimeter anti-tank gun. Yeah, we have a series of, of Japanese uh, guns right here. The first is the Type 1 anti-tank mm -hmm. gun. Um, I can pull out the other one next to it would be the Type 92. It's a, a little battalion gun. Uh, these guns were all over the Pacific during World War II. The 40, the 47, the Type 1 is credited for knocking out a lot of Shermans during uh, uh, various campaigns in, in, in World War II mm -hmm. Pacific. The one next was a Type 94 75 millimeter mountain gun, which we only released a little while ago. Yeah, right. Um, but it's already out of production. Those little wheels that come with it. These, these wheels right here, super rare. Too um, hard to get your, okay, fair you enough. You can't, can't get them anymore. Mm -hmm. I just happened to have some foresight several years ago and I saw some, a batch for sale, bought them all, and that was enough to give us 100 sets and now they're gone. You cannot buy this kit anymore. That's we too bad. We'll probably never be able to make it. Because this is a cool little kit because I know it's actually designed to, the, the mountain gun was able to be broken down and, and hauled by like pack animals right. or artillery and they designed it to be broken down into miniature and, and models we, that, too. Th that wheel is just not made anymore. Hmm. Uh, not in that size. Well, I guess there's, there's still one more chance to get it. So, <laughs> So there you go. Uh, so now we have a Japanese tank. Yep, Type, type 95 Hago. So this is a kit that was released. It's been several iterations for Brick Mania. Mm -hmm. This is the, the latest the latest model. Uh, it came out a couple of years ago. Um, of course, there's a lot of them out there, but if you want to get one now, um, one of the originals with instructions, this is, this is the way to do it. Moving on from there, it looks like do, are these two linked with this? Uh, are they these are. Two, okay, that's so the, we've got a little Italian, a little Italian section here. Uh, we have the Canon D Canon dot seventy five thirty two. Mm -hmm. If I knew how to say the the numbers in Italian, I would. Uh, <laughs> but basically, it's a it's a, uh, a, a seventy five millimeter field piece used by Italy during World War Two, mm -hmm. um, and. Next to it is the SPA TL37, which is like our artillery tractor, 4x4 four four artillery tractor. It does have some cool features, like you have four-wheel steering. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it actually works. You just turn the spare tire, it makes the, the wheels turn. Um, they are kind of, they're not, we're not selling it as a set, we're not auctioning it as a set, but they do go together. Um, it, it was a cool little vehicle. Uh, we only made, we did a real brief uh, North Africa stint mm -hmm. just, just a, you know, a year or two ago. And this is a couple remains, uh, a couple sets remains, as is the Semivante the 7518, which is a self-propelled gun on a light tank chassis. Also comes with a figure. You yeah, have a figure. A cool looking little kit as well. Yeah, that, 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 that helmet, we took it from Star Wars, but the actual, <laughs> the actual Italian tanker helmets did look just like that. And like, I think that's probably where Star Wars got the idea from. Okay, that's They probably awesome. found it in a prop room and said, hey, we're gonna put this on our Imperial troopers. So. so now German tank destroyer next to that. Yep, also Martyr three. The figure. Yep, this is the this is the Martyr three. This is the middle middle years version of the Martyr three. There mm -hmm. were three Martyr threes. This being the mid the mid production version, uh, which is based a Martyr three is a um, it's a Panzer thirty eight T chassis. So this is Czech chassis, and they took this captured captured Russian. Uh, 76 millimeter guns and stuck them on the on the hull. Yeah, so it made cool a great great exhaust. little tank destroyer. Very uh, very cost effective for the Germans because they basically took two existing pieces, um, put them together, and made a new vehicle that was keeping in line with standards of the day. So. Very cool. Moving on to the Russians after that T34 76. T34 76 is one of the older models. This is the one one of the ones I designed. Okay. It, we don't have the figure here, but I will find the figure for it so oh, we can get it. Very cool. <laughs> I, I know we have them. Um, it's just a matter of like digging through our parts to find the figure. I don't know what mm -hmm. happened to this one. This one may be one of those examples that wasn't the store display. It may have been one of our uh, uh, collaborative builds. Sure. Okay. So, Very so cool. That why the, that's why we don't have the figure. Because uh, each kid on this table here has some sort of story behind it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. It makes it unique. Uh, next to that we have the M8 Scott. Yep. M8 Scott is basically the. It's a 75 millimeter howitzer stuck on a M5 uh, light tank hull. Um, this is self-propelled artillery. They were all over the Pacific, all over Europe, um, used even after uh, after World War II. These, these things were in Vietnam, uh, used by the French. They were they were in North Africa, all over. Uh, in fact, I think in South America. I think in some places they still exist. Wow, <laughs> still, still in use. So it was a beast. Comes with a cool little uh, display card there too as well. Some of these kits still have that. Uh, a little Stug Three action next to it. Stug Three Alpha F. F. Yep, this is from our this is from our uh, uh, Stalingrad. Uh, campaign. We did a whole series of Stalingrad kits several years ago. And this is this is one of the holdovers. This was developed for that. Um, it was so popular we actually brought it back a, a couple of years ago just to Very make another, another batch. So, and then next to that, uh, the STFKZ. Uh, come, so this is a combo kit. I think I've seen this on auction before. Right. It's the it's the it's the half track. It's, it's 
half track with a uh, 75 millimeter cannon. Mm -hmm. um, it did make a previous appearance on one of our auctions. We do happen to have this one. So you do get one figure with it. Mm -hmm. um, you get the you get the pack 40. You get the half track, and the figure. Uh, it's very unique, very sought after because we only made this particular half track for a short period of time. Yeah, all done up in that ambush camo too. That yep. looks exactly like it would. Very, very cool kit as well. And then next to that, it looks like we have a little bit of a larger anti-aircraft piece. Yeah, that's a that's a Pack 36. That's mm -hmm. that's the German 88. Um, this is a, another older version. We used to like four or five years ago, all of our German kits were all in this light gray color because we had to designate colors for everything because we were sure. thought we'd have to classify everything. Now we're not stuck with, we're not holding ourselves back. <laughs> but we do have this light gray. This is, this is an older, older piece of, of Brickmania history. This kid is um, from back in the day. I mean, if you, mm -hmm. could, if you could go back in the day. Uh, it does have one of our original uh, German uh, figures. Um, this, is, this is another oldie, oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Oh, I'm just so very very simple figure. There real quick, but it does come with come with a light gray figure. Yeah, very Basically, cool. We call him the here soldier now. <laughs> <laughs> very classic look to it. And then yeah, this one we've seen around a little bit. Big beefy kit. Right. This is the this is the Panzer Panzer Jaeger Tiger P. So Ferdinand is it would be more commonly known. Um, a tank destroyer based on the Porsche Tiger hull. Which of course the Porsche Tiger was never put in production, but they had all these hulls. And they turned them into this monster anti-tank gun. Uh, again, from uh, this one was from our Kursk series. So we have one left over. Um, I don't know how we managed to survive, and it still is, is here. <laughs> Very cool. And then next to that, we have a British cruiser tank. Crusader. MP3. Yep. yep, it's a cruiser tank. Uh, so the Crusader, uh, one of the most prolific uh, British tanks during World War II, used all over uh, North Africa. Um, it was the Pretty much the main German or uh, British tank sure. um, fought against Italians and the Germans. Um, so we we made a few batches of these. Of course, here's your chance to get it. Yeah, very cool looking tank. One we haven't seen in a while too. And then I like the figure with that one as well with his binoculars up there, a little British tanker <laughs> action. <laughs> yep, so yep. very very cool. Next to that we have the F4U Corsair or uh, early uh, Ocel aircraft piece. <laughs> this this is the actually this is the most recent version. So this is a. Uh, um, you know, Cody's famous for his, his Corsairs, of course, is, is mm -hmm. one of the best ones. We are not permitted to make this right now. Okay. So, uh, we, we're, you know, since we can't make it, we're just going to sell off the display model. We can't make any more um, for foreseeable future. Working on potentially getting 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 permission to make more, but for sure, now, fingers not, crossed. This is uh, they will return, but right now this is your chance. So that's just keeping keeping in the whole theme that when we're making stuff, we, whenever possible, we are getting permission from the manufacturers, and we decided if we can't get permission for this piece, we're not going to make it. If it's if it's something that we potentially, you know, if it's a company that still exists, we are going to talk to them and sure. make sure we have official permission. Um, so th that's where we are with the Corsair. We're trying, we're working on it, but. Uh, until we get permission, we're not going to make any more. Fair enough. So this is your chance. If you if you, if you need it now, this this is your, this is your shot to be able to get that. Uh, looks like next to that we have a couple of add-on packs. This first one here is for the Sherman. This one I believe is for the Sherman as yeah, well. Yeah, we have two for the Sherman. We can actually reorder these. Yeah, if sure. Makes more sense. So um, we have the Dozer Blade add-on pack for the. That's this one here. Mm -hmm. Dozer Blade M1 Dozer Blade for the for Cody Ocell's Sherman. It's the most recent Sherman kit, which I believe is actually we just had a batch come out this week. Yep. So if you don't have the base model now, you can you can still get it. Uh, next up is a Calliope. Um, the Calliope sold out quite a while ago. Um, this is the the big rocket tube setup that <laughs> they stick on top of the Sherman. Turret. Looks awesome. Right. We have we have one of those for auction. Um, this is these are from display models. You will need the base model. Sure. So. Next to that is another add-on pack. This is the 72K 25mm anti-aircraft anti gun. This pack was designed to go in the back of the Gaz. Okay. Um, so if you have the Gaz AAA truck or even the Gaz AA truck, this would, this would be perfectly fine to put in the back of it. Uh, great model. It doesn't have, so the actual standalone uh, 72K would have a, a tripod base on it. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't because it was it mounted right in the back of the truck. So Very cool. If you but wanted to upgrade it, you just have to put some feet on yeah, it. Yeah, you could modify it as well. So otherwise, if you have the gas, there's your head on pack right there. Yep. Um, looks like next to that, we have several variants of the uh, Humvee. Correct. Humvee is another one of these brands that we're stopping to do until we get permission. Um, and in, until that happens, we're not going to be selling anymore. So mm -hmm. here goes our display models. Um, if we're paying royalties on the display models, we might as well sell them. <laughs> so um, we have, first one here is the M998. It's just the basic model. One after that is the M998 with the M1025 add-on pack. We just call it the M1025. Okay. That would be the up-armored. It's mm -hmm. just the turtle shell 
it does have this turret with the uh, the small turret with the opening hatch on top. Um, our Humvees, these Humvees are all very playable. I should. Yeah. You know, they all have opening doors. You can put the guys inside. All, everything opens and works. Super like uh, sturdy and sociable too. You can even pretend there's an engine in there. <laughs> so, um, next to that is an M998 with the canvas cover on. Mm -hmm. Um, I should point out that those first three Humvees all come with their boxes. We actually opened up sets to make the display models and, and kept the boxes because we thought, Great. hey, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do something with these boxes at some point. Um, and then after that, we have the ambulance. Uh, the ambulance is the only one that doesn't have the original box, but you do get the instructions for both the, the Humvee and yeah, the... Yeah, plus this is cool looking with the, the brick built top and then got a couple of stretchers and stuff in the back. Yeah, and right. And there's oh, the, the stairs that come this down. Is, this roof does come yeah, off. Yeah, look so at that. Easy access to the inside. So, so like you were saying, super playable, all of these, uh, just across the board. Yep can have some fun with them and, and whatever your activities are. Right. And then it looks like we have one in tan and then also an add-on pack to, that goes with that one, but they'll be sold separately. No, no, that's all one. Okay, so this is all one this together. This is this is one lot. Okay. So uh, I got to find the instructions for the actual base model. Mm -hmm. But this is the MEU Humvee, basically the difference between the, the MEU, which means Marine Expeditionary Unit. It's a Marine Corps Humvee, which would have the snorkel. It just has the higher stack. Whenever you see the Humvees with the um, it, it'll be an air intake right there. Okay. Whenever it's raised up high, typically that means it's, it's a Marine Corps Humvee. Okay. Because they have all of theirs to be uh, semi-aquatic. Okay. So fair enough. So this will be. Each one of those five, are individual. Five separate listings. But this is one. You get the base Humvee. Mm -hmm. You get the turtle shell add-on, and then you get the armor gunner kit. protection unit. Yep. Okay. Very very cool. So that's one. That's one auction lot right there. I just put it all together because we only had one base model. Okay. So then moving on from there, it looks like we got the, the Striker here, and that's also going to come with one of the add-on packs included. Uh, but tell me a little bit about this kit, Dan. Well, Striker is one of these, you know, it's, it's one of the iconic U.S. military vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, we had a kind of, we're faced with a choice. We, <laughs> we had, we can make, keep making Strikers or we can make Humvees too. Um, look how many wheels this thing uses. Eight wheel sure. vehicle. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It does have it does have the front four wheels do pose for steering. So mm -hmm. like, just like the real thing, the, the front two sets of wheels move. Um, we did a, a whole series of these. This is our first real add-on pack series. So you had the Striker. Uh, it came with. We had a light optional light add-on pack, light mm -hmm. weapons add-on pack, which we do provide in, in in this actual lot. You get the white light weapons pack in addition to the Striker base model, which is this right here. Yep. So it isn't it isn't built yet, but you'll be able to build it on. Right. And there is a heavy weapons pack too, which of course is is, is sold out for, for quite a long time. Okay. It does not come with this lot, um, but we decided to discontinue the striker um, just because it was so intensive use, use of the wheels and the tires. Um, it just eats them up, eight, eight per model, and after a couple hundred of these, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> time to allocate our resources a little differently. Yeah, we had, we had, to, we had to stop doing it. Fair enough. Now we have a run of uh, MBTs here, so let's start with the Challenger 2, which is the British main battle tank, right. uh, and then we'll just kind of keep going from there. So we've done the main battle tank series for a little over a year now. We started out with the most modern main battle tanks. I think the Abrams was actually our first, and then we started just going to other countries. Um, and then now cur the current one is the, the Cold War, and they're all starting to sell out. And I, and I should point out with these main battle tanks, we've made a conscious decision. As they sell out from now on, they're not going to get restocked. Sure. Um, so you don't be holding out for a, re a restock of any of these things that you're seeing here because it's just not going to happen. Um, and the reason being is that there's so many more that we want to do. We want to go back to revisit more modern main B MBTs and then keep going with the, the Cold War, the whole, you know, there's, there's just so many to do. We don't limit ourselves, yeah. right, exactly. So, so get what, if you like what you see, get it now. Right, Challenger 2 being the most modern British uh, MBT, the classic gray and black uh, camouflage. Uh, right next to that, we have the K2 Black Panther. This guy here um, is the South Korean uh, state of you know frontline mm -hmm. main battle tank. Uh, they're sort of their their homegrown Abrams uh, category type tank, main cool battle tank. Cool camo as well. And then we have an Andrew Summers model here. This is the uh, Chieftain. This is the Chieftain. So yeah, Andrew, British Andrew Cold Summers War battle first tank. first main you know first big kit for uh, Brickmania. Um, it is. Our first Cold War kit, too, the first Cold War MBT oh. series. Um, they are out of production now, um, so this is first first of first one appearing on on auction. Um, we have another one, so of course, it's going to stay in our GHQ display. Okay, so. yeah, very cool. Love that urban camo. Yeah. Next to that is the Charles Leclerc. Is that Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc. Char Leclerc. Leclerc. Yeah. Yeah, close enough. But apparently, <laughs> you, you get a baguette and a oh, bottle of water. With yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's water. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is either. <laughs> a tanker fancy, will not go fancy. hungry. Well, this guy's definitely got water. The Italian, the Arietta. So this is the Italian MBT. Um, does come with a, of course, Italian tanker, and it looks like he has a, um, looks like a jar of olives. I'm not sure. So there's, there's some, there's some. Is it olives? olives. Is it olives, John? John Johnson? 
John, John gave us the nod, it's all. What John says goes. Spar yeah, Pel is it Brickagrino or something? <laughs> Slam Marino. <laughs> then the Merkava. Merkava, the Israeli. Big, impressive So it's the Merkava Mark IV. This is the latest and greatest of the uh, Merkava series of main battle tanks. Of course, the Israeli uh, contender. This kind of unique is that it's a tank and it's a troop transport at the same time. So, uh, Engine in the front. Very interesting. Engine in the front, yeah. That's actually for survivab crew survivability. Mm -hmm. So... Set so. that there, and then we have. So this is the this is the, the the beefed up Abrams. This isn't quite the same one as the as the massively available kit. This is the one from before that, correct? So this is not the currently available Abrams. Right. This is the previous version. This is the this is basically the, the M2 or M1A2 Abrams, uh, the latest model that's being fielded now with the Tusk and Crows. The Tusk is the urban uh, urban armor. It's basically. Uh, Protection against RPGs. Uh, you have this add-on, add-on pack, add-on armor pack on both the side of the turret and the side of the hull, and the crows meaning the remote weapon system on, for the com for the commander on top. This this particular model comes with. Uh, you do have actually get an extra M2HB for the t the the main gun. And two crew members. Two crew members. Yeah, fully printed crew members. That's they're quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the precursor of the whole MBT series. And of course, you know, we do sell an Abrams uh, on occasion still, but it's not, doesn't nearly have all these features on it. Yeah, right, this is, this is a much, much bigger size. And you get the sure. box, so. Yeah, very cool. So that kind of cleans up our run of MBTs, at least for now. Right now we got some space models. We'll start with Friendship 7. Right, this cool is. a little display model, at least. Friendship 7 would be John Glenn's, uh, of course, his, his Atlas, uh, actually, it's, yeah, it's Atlas. Atlas and Mercury Atlas rocket. Uh, you do get the capsule. Glenn will fit inside of it. We do have our John Glenn figure. This is the <laughs> one of the last times we decided we're going to put a, an actual figure in a in a kit. So, and then an next actual the, person, I think. Yeah. And then <laughs> next to that, we have Pioneer Ten. Ooh, oh goodness! Well, balance. Yeah. It's, so why don't, we, why don't we turn it around? So this you're looking at the backside of it actually. There we go. Okay. Let's so, help out camera guy here for a second. Yeah. This one back a little bit. There so you go. do get a, this is Pioneer 10, it's a deep space probe, and you do get a astrophysicist to go with it. So you get, some, it does have some nice interesting stickers and, and uh, other details. Um, being the, this is the little plate that was basically, uh, actually I think that's printed. I don't think that's a sticker. Uh, definitely printed. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So, but that's the little, it's a little, it's a highlight of the little, the little plaque that was, was set inside this Pioneer spacecraft as it was launched out into space. Pioneer being one of the first um, I guess it's it's going to be the, one of the first uh, man-made objects to actually leave the um, solar system. Wow! So yeah, that's pretty cool. Very very cool. Another piece of space history next to it, the uh, X-1 rocket plane. So that's the uh, plane that first broke the sound barrier. Correct? It is. It is. Yep. And you, you get a pilot. So well, Chuck you know, Yeager minifig. If you know, we don't we don't specifically call him out as Chuck Yeager, <laughs> but you would know if you know the history of this plane that that would be Chuck's plane. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have the X-1 and right next to that. The X-15. X-15. And I don't know if you, there's a little space snippet of space history that the X-15 was actually piloted by um, Neil Armstrong, one of the, one of the first early F-15 F or X-15 pilots. Wow. So not only was he an X, you know, a pioneer in, in high speed stellar travel, he mm -hmm. actually, tr you know, or Earth, Earth, Earth orbit travel, he actually uh, was the first, you know, first man to step on the moon. So, wow! Commanded the uh, Apollo 11 uh, mission. So it's kind of a lineup of cool minifigs and cool kits as well. So, moving away from the space race now, yeah. now we have kind of a little run of helicopters kicking that off with the Huey. Huey, yep. This is this is the basic Huey, the UH-1D model that we we put out a few years ago, a couple of years ago actually. It's it's sort of a continuation. We've been doing these Hueys on and off for quite a while. Let me pick this up here and show you that does the you know these these doors do open. Um, so if you wanted to. Have your crew come in and out. That's the the, the way to do it. Um, this is a discontinued set, so we are unfortunately in a dry period where we cannot make any more Bell products. Um, we do like, as we mentioned before, we do like to license everything from the actual companies that produce them. Um, unfortunately, another toy company right now has an exclusive license on Bell products. So while we can't make any more, we do have these. These have already been paid for. So you know what? We're going to put them up for auction. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hopefully soon we'll be able to re-release these 
as 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 production kits or mm -hmm. uh, newer upgraded versions. But for the time being, uh, until that happens, this is the only way you're going to get one of these original Brick Mania. Yeah, another one of those kits where it's like, we fingers crossed, we're hoping it will return in the future. But for now, this is pretty much the only yeah, ones and, we can make available. And I'm actually itching to upgrade it too, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know I can make it better. It'll be redesigned when, when the gloves come off, and, and I'm not I'm not fighting budget constraints. It'll it'll be better. Um, cool, excited to see what that looks speaking like. Speaking of budget yeah. constraints, this is the Viper. This is the latest. Uh, the AH1Z, another Bell Huey related product. Um, this is a this is the, the the U.S. Marine Corps' most modern uh, gunship version uh, AH1 helicopter. Mm -hmm. um, I keep seeing pieces. These these came from store displays, so they're they're little <laughs> they they came little travel worn. Um, they are all, all there. All the pieces are there. They just need to be a little reconfigured, which mm -hmm. you'll have to do when you get them. But this this one is, shows you what happens when I'm not restrained by a budget. Uh, has lots of printed elements on it. They're not stickers. Um, there are a few stickers for places I couldn't avoid it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, do have some nice elements on here. This is the AH-1 Viper with the optional weapons pack. Loadout, right? sure. The loadout's included. So, that's very cool. Yeah, that's one thing that's unique about this. You do get the... The, the all the the, the missiles and, and and rocket pods and things like that. So. Just a dangerous looking attack right. helicopter. And you get the box again. This is one of our display models that we, we we salvaged out of a we pulled it right off the production line and built it. Very very cool. And then next to that, a, a very requested kit, the uh, Jayhawk, and the classic Coast Guard colors. So, and then we could do we have the full the crew in here? It looks like yeah. There's yeah. All, there's all there's four there's guys a, are in there. Yeah. This is the full crew. This this is the, M, the MH60T. This is the the the. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard version of the Black Hawk. Uh, it's a it's a variation, same same sure. airframe, but uh, it, it's very specific. Uh, it's closer to the Navy version. It's closer okay. to the Seahawk. It does come with the um, M28 M260D machine gun. For the first time that Brick Arms made this, you know, we, they made a custom machine gun just for this kit. Oh, that's cool. So it's the first time that was ever offered to the public. Um, again, this is this is a discontinued set. Um, we know we're never going to make this particular model again. So mm -hmm. if, if you want to get it, this is this is the last chance. It, it does come with sticker for stickers for sticker sets for various different Coast Guard units. I believe the stickers are in the in the in the pack. So if you don't like, if you're not if you're not interested in having it on this particular one, because these only operate on a certain basis, mm -hmm. um, that this is a. Uh, uh, you can change it to the one that's correct for your uh, locale. All right, moving on from there, we have the MJ1 Jammer. <coughs> so the MJ1 like Jammer is an ordnance loader. Okay. Uh, we, we put this out when we did the F-16, I think. We had the, the, the loadout pack. Um, but we still have a few left over. Uh, it's a standalone kit, and it's typical Air Force uh, ordnance loading equipment. So we have one. Uh, it's just kind of leading off into our whole airplane series right yeah, now. Yeah, now we're getting to kind of the meat and potatoes of this uh, of this uh, Brick Mania auctions St here. Stuff that you've been waiting for. Yeah, this is, these are some of the big ticket items. So we'll kick that off with the A-10. Um, haven't seen one of these in a long time. I mean, I don't even, I'm not even 100% sure where this one came from, but nonetheless, there's <laughs> one one available. All right, right. We, we, this, was, this is a display model. You know, so these things exist in the back rooms of our stores. Or they'll sit in the store windows because the stores are like, hey, we want this thing. We want to display it for right. And it looks great. Um, this was the first of our kind of bigger airplane models. This was, this was I, I designed this a couple of years ago, and it's sort of like, was a breakthrough for us because not only was it bigger than most of the things that we'd done in the past, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we we had to actually like get bigger boxes. There's a lot of things that we had to do. Oops. Drop the landing gear. Drop the wheel. Yeah, just a cool model to show off and <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and the landing the door broke off. I'm gonna prepare you for shipping a little bit. <laughs> Here, you know, I'm sure they'll let me fix this thing. <laughs> Must have gotten, must have had a heavy, uh, set down hard. So. Just trying to show it off. No, no, that's, I'm sure it was, <laughs> it, it had to have been weakened before it was picked up. Very cool. Uh, so, A10, it does have all the hard points for the weapons. The instructions do have the, tell you how to make all the different weapon systems that come with it, but you'll have to buy your own pieces. Um, I think the jammer instructions actually might come with that too. So. Oh, very cool. So we, if you we, have your own bricks, you can build your own loadout. We were a little weary of putting all the loadout in it because it was already the most expensive kit Brick Mania had done. So we're like, let's not, you know, at the time, <laughs> let's, let's not make it even more expensive. So we left them in the dust. All right, so moving on from there, F-100. F-100, yeah, this was Cody's first big jet. Uh, first to come with a display stand too. It's kind of pretty, pretty unique. So the F-100 being the sort of frontline ground attack fighter used by the Air Force during World War II, or not World War II, Vietnam War, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it was a supersonic fighter. We do have the full loadout on it. 
Um, this is the is this the first time that the uh, the sassy siskin made an appearance? <laughs> this is the first sassy siskin, really. Oh man, yeah, so, here that's on. Yeah, it's on this side. Here, you see, we're talking guy. about the the, the <laughs> nose art. That's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. So this came out a couple of years ago. We did a we did one one restock of it, um, which is probably why we have a display model. Sure. So. Okay. Well, and then kind of continuing that same uh, same camo scheme here. Going on, uh, this is the, the F4C Phantom. F4C Phantom 2, yep. Which kind of a cool story behind behind this jet? What what is the this particular jet? Well, this is this jet, the numbers and the tail sign, all that's it's from Colonel Robin Olds. Okay, that's um, who is a fam not only a, a World War II ace, but also an ace in Vietnam as mm -hmm. well. So um, you know, they they were like basically um, trying to figure out how the MiGs, the, 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 the North Vietnamese MiGs were able to successfully attack uh, American fighters and get away with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Robin Olds and his Air Force buddies tried to come up with tactics to be able to combat the MiG-20s, and they were actually very successful. So you hear all these stories about how um, the MiGs ravaged the American fighters, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, that's only partially true because when it when it came down to it, that only this little window where the Americans were caught off guard only lasted sure. a little while, and the Air Force and the, and the Navy uh, both developed their own tactics. Of, they of, quickly of, of, made yeah. up for it. Right. It was a very short-lived, happy period for the uh, North Vietnamese fighter pilots. <laughs> very short-lived. Uh, and then next to that, we have uh, one of uh, Brickmania's uh, another premier uh, aircraft kit, the uh, F-14 Tomcat. So we'll see if I can get these wings to go out. Do they want to? Oh, probably the other way. Other way. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> so variable, variable uh, wing dimension uh, fighter aircraft, uh, swept wings, or um, you can have them wide for takeoff and landing. F-14 Tomcat was very innovative. A giant uh, twin engine uh, Air Force all-weather interceptor and uh, I guess air superiority fighter. Um, Famous for its, its role in the Top Gun. We have it, this particular model is set up in the Jolly Rogers uh, uh, squadron, mm -hmm. so with the black tails. The instruction book does tell you how to make the unit from the Top Gun. Uh, that's all up to you if you want to configure it that way. Cool. That was just, it was just an option that we th started to throw in the instruction book. Yeah. Um, you do get two pilots, um, and they are yep, with the Jolly Rogers. Comes with a really basic weapons loadout. Okay. Are uh, these listed separately? They are separately. Okay. We do have the Phoenix missile add-on pack mm -hmm. um, separately. Uh, we listed them separately because we know that there was a, a number of people who wanted additional missiles and we're not making them at the moment. So we do have one Phoenix missile add-on pack. So if it's something you've been waiting for to get your hands on because you already own the F-14, well, you're lucky in this instance. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> Most of them are getting loaded up. All right, cool. Next to that one, I have the F-35 which I think a lot of people were like, that'll be about the same size as the F-22. Nope, there's a significant size difference. No, it's <laughs> tiny. It's a single engine fighter. Yeah, so right. So this is the Air Force's, well, actually, it's, it's, the, it's multiple uh, uh, different forces are using this. The, um, you know, the Air Force is using the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, international customers all over the place. So F-35 Lightning, you know, it's a multi-role uh, fighter. It does have stealth capability, plus it can be used for all kinds of other things. Uh, if you want to waste your stealth uh, ability and load it up with bombs, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but we did, this is the B, the Lightning II, F-35B mm -hmm. Lightning II. Um, it has, this is the Stovall version, so it basically has the thrust vectoring, all the, the fancy bells and whistles that a uh, Stovall fighter would have. Sure. Basically means short takeoff and landing, um, used by the Marines uh, on these smaller carriers and, uh, you know, in the field. It's supposed to be uh, much more versatile for, uh, <clears throat> you know, attacking forces. Mm -hmm. Well, and just model statistics in general, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 30 moving parts. Yeah. So if you want, a, want an involved model that can literally do everything the plane can do, well, yeah. start here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good it does all the, all the different thing, compartments open, the engine nozzles and all that stuff. And then sitting next to that is one we really haven't seen for a long time either, and that is the F-15 Strike Eagle. Comes with this cool little card here as well. Yeah, that's another thing part, we haven't seen. Part of the stand. And then there's lights in this bad boy, right? There is. I'm not sure if the batteries are, are, are any good in here, though. We haven't. We haven't tested it. How do you get that to work, Cody? You just yeah, you just spin it up here. Yeah, the battery's probably dead. All you right, need well, to you can beef batteries. up your own batteries, but there, <laughs> trust me, there is lights in this, and so it looks awesome. Plus, at, it comes with a cool load. As a reminder, the F-15 is was the F-15 is the well, was for the longest time the premier 
um, air superiority fighter, fighter used by the U.S. Air Force and you know select allied nations. The E, the e version is the ground attack. It's really specified twin seater ground attack version. Um, and in this case, we have a full loadout. You get missiles, you get bombs, you've got all the jammer pods, and you have mm -hmm. fuel tanks. So uh, this is quite a, a nice kit. Uh, it was over $1,000, and we only made, do we make 50 of these, Cody? 50 or 100. I think we only made 50, but. So a low count yeah. kit, though. Yeah. I think we just made one batch of 50. Well, and given the size, it's, it's understandable, too, but it's also just impressive that, you know, <laughs> this one survived this long. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm surprised that we had it, but I think the stores just didn't want to give it up because it looks so cool. Mm -hmm. on the show. Yeah, that'll definitely pull people <laughs> in uh, off the street a little bit. So will this one sitting next to us, which is another one that we've been requested to have returned quite a bit. I'll prop these pilots up here. That is the MV-22 Osprey. MV-22 Osprey, again, this is another Bell product. We are officially not, a, not allowed to sell any news, any of these. This is actually considered to be sold already, so we're able to actually um, get rid of it out of our inventory. Um, it's the last one we, we are able to get to the public. So, uh, Bell product. We'd love to do more, but we, of course we're going to have to wait and see uh, if we're able to uh, get in on that next time that that, that license becomes available. Mm -hmm. So if you can't wait, this is your chance to get on it right now yeah. because uh, that is that is the end of the line for those for the foreseeable future. And it does come with the box. This is one that we put together. I believe mm -hmm. we put it together for the GHQ store. Uh, but since we can't sell them anymore, here it is. Fair enough. And next to that, we have the uh, Centurion Raider. Right, this is a I'm starting a, off our last two from 80s, kits, 80s yeah. television fame. Mm. Uh, you may you may recognize this thing. Uh, these are Centurion Raider pilots. It comes with three. Some very involved minifigures. If I'm holding that in an case. <laughs> they, they, uh, <laughs> they are. They are. They are. They have they're insanely, everything going on. They're printed. They've got they've got printed parts. They've got armor, special armor. They have overmolded Centurion guns made by <laughs> by Brick Arms only for this kit. So if you were looking for some rare Brick Arms, this is this is the place to get it. So. Um, this is another display model that, you know, we, we did a sci-fi theme for, for about a year, and then we discontinued it, and this is one of the few remaining artifacts mm -hmm. from that, that time. Very cool looking model, just cool shape to it. Right. If you like that sci-fi stuff, then that, well then sitting next to it is, is really the, the creme de la creme of the sci-fi. Right, this is the pinnacle of our sci-fi. Right, exactly, and that um, is the off-world Marines dropship. Right, and this, I, I could, hey John, why don't you come over here and show us how this thing opens up? <laughs> well, if I have the expert, I'm, a, I'm afraid of this thing. Well, they, it shoots missiles, so like so lots and lots of them. I just started straight out of the legs. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> So this arm goes like so. And we should note that that's loaded with flick missiles. Yeah. Not, not even, they're spring loaded. They're that work too. Yeah. You can shoot. You can so shoot that's that full like, arm open. And then of course you have these side pieces that flip up too for their Jeez. missiles. Missile yeah. array. Cockpit, you can get into the cockpit rather easily. Yeah, look at that. So get your get your guys in. in there. It does come with the two pilots. This does not come with the Marine APC. It is designed to carry the Marine APC, the Space Marine APC, um, which I believe we sold in our previous auctions. Yes, right. right. Um, and of course, the elevator doesn't go up and down if you have an APC and you can stick it in. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. stick it in there, drop, load, the, load the APC up Should inside. I fire it? There's no, <laughs> I don't want to have to collect it. Basically, all there is no shortage of functions. If you, if you get, get your hands on this, just go exploring. There's a it, lot it of stuff. It is a monster kit. It came in a giant box. It was really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> It is, yeah, it's, it's, it's sturdy, it's well built. Yeah, it's like a playset when it in and of itself. I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah. dang cool. So it, if, you, if you have the, the, uh, the Marine APC, of course you're gonna need the dropship to uh, deliver it. Um, we only made a lim did we make 20 of these things? It was some really small number. It was a small batch, yeah. Uh, I don't think it was 50. Add more maybe because it did well? Maybe I think we did, I, we did we, maybe we did 10 to start with and 10 more after that. It wasn't very many. Um, so it, it wasn't many. It's just a beast, and it, you know the, the original price tag was fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so that gives you an idea. So if you that and the APC together is like seventeen fifty or, or eighteen hundred dollars or something. Worth every penny. But then your There's collection John, worth yeah, every penny. But then your collection is complete right there. So right. and that uh, that pretty much wraps up everything that we've gone over. So all that stuff is available on the Brickmania eBay page right now. Just make sure to go to eBay and check under Brickmania Toys for that full listing there. Otherwise, we've got some links in the description of this video for that information as well. Uh, Dan, thanks for walking through all these kits. Me. It's just cool to hear the history behind some of these kind of stuff, both Brickmania and in, and in real life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, once again, these are available right now. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks.